team. And this lesson is, at the end of this lesson, learners are expected to express permission, obligation, and prohibition using modals. Now, what are modals? Ano ba itong mga modals? Now, modals are helping verbs that are joined with another verbs to express permission, obligation, and other moods. Ang modals daw ay helping verb na ginagamit na pandugtong sa isa pang verb in order to express permission, obligation, and other moods. Alright, here are the modals that express permission. Ito na yung mga modals na nagpapahiwatig ng permission. First is the modal may. Example, may I go out now? Dito, this is a sentence that shows uh, permission. Nauna ang ating modal na may. At kasunod nito ay ang ating subject na I. Alright. Ang may ang nauna. Ito ang ating modal. And then followed with the subject I. This is our subject. And then our main verb is go. Alright. This is our main verb. Now, if we are going to uh, invert the sentence, pag ito yung ating binaliktarin, uh, binaliktad, it's going to be like this. I may go out. The first part in the sentence is our subject. Maunang subject na I. And then uh, our modal may follow with the main verb go. Alright. But here, it is now, it is not, it is no longer a permission, but rather it is an intention. Na bago na yung kanyang uh, uh, mood. Instead na permission, Naging intention. In the first sentence, it is a permission. Kasi nauna ang modal na may. Followed by the subject. Now, in the second example, we began our sentence with the subject I, followed with the modal may, and then followed with the uh, main verb go. By the way, when we use modal, the modal is always followed by the main verb, particularly the root word of the main verb, like this one, go. Wala, it, it is not a participle, present participle, or past participle. No, it is not. It is the root word of the main verb, go. But this time, it is not a permission, but rather, it is an intention. Ito ay kapag nauna ang subject. Pag nauna yung modal, it is a permission. Okay. Next. Next example, may I join you? Now, in this example, it is a permission because the sentence began with the modal may followed with the subject, uh, yes, the subject, pronoun I, and then followed with the main verb join. Now, according to our definition of a modal, a modal is a verb that is joined by another verb. Now, here, the verb may is actually a helping verb. That's why sometimes this, this is also called auxiliary verb. Kasi siya ay tumutulong, tumutulong lang. It helps the main verb join and gives additional meaning. Kasi, if you are going to use join only, I join you, the thought is not complete. So in order to make sense for the sentence, we need to add may. May I join you? In order to have a complete sense or a complete idea. Now, the idea in the sentence is it expresses a permission. Now, if you are going to begin the sentence with the subject I, the idea is changed. It will become intention. Okay, next. May I be absent tomorrow? This is another uh, sentence that begins with the followed with the subject. In this case, it is a permission. Remember that, kapag permission, dapat mauna ang modal na may. Kasi pag nauna ang subject na pronoun I, the idea is changed from permission magiging intention na siya. Like this one. I may be absent tomorrow. 
it becomes a possibility or a probability na babago kapag nauna ang subject na pronoun. By the way, when we say intention, permission, or possibility, pag ginamit natin ng pronoun na I, the idea is that the speaker is the one who is uh, giving the idea, who is expressing the mood in the sentence, like this one. I may be absent tomorrow. It is a possibility or probability that I may be absent. Maaring hindi ako makapasok bukas. Next. Number two, use of uh, modal here is the modal can. Can I leave now? Now, notice, we began the sentence with the modal can and then followed with the pronoun I and then followed with the main verb live. Now, in this case, this is a permission. The mood is permission. In this case, yung sinabi ko kanina, palaging nauna ang modal na can. Kasi, kapag inuna natin ang subject na I, the mood is changed. Like this one. Uh, another one here, another example, the subject here is plural, we. Can we live now? This is another example of permission. Now, if we change the uh, arrangement of the words here in the sentence, we begin the sentence with the pronoun I, subject I, and then followed with the modal, the idea is changed. From permission, it becomes intention. Now, if we are going to use plural subject, we, it becomes like this. We can live now. The idea is the same. It is still an intention. Next, another example. You can go now. Our subject here is you, follow the modal can, and then follow the main verb go. Remember, the modal is always partnered with the main verb go. Kasi if you are going to use, uh, if you are going to write a sentence without modal, without the word can, the idea is changed. It becomes like this. You go now. It becomes a command. But, uh, alright here, if you are going to use can, you can go now. It is not, uh, it does not sound like a drastic command. But if you are going to use only you, go now, it becomes a forceful, a forceful command or drastic command. Now, in this case, it is, you can go now, it is a permission that you can go now. Pinapayagan ka na. Now, in this case, remember, always begin the sentence with the pronoun, followed with the modal and then the main verb. Now, if we are going to invert the sentence, we begin with the modal. The idea is changed again. Can you go now? It becomes a question. <clears throat> From permission, it becomes a question like this. Next. Number three is could. Could is possible to be used also in asking for permission, but is seldom used. Pwede rin gamitin ito. But as I have said, it is not usual, uh, usually used. It is seldom used. Pambihirang magamit. Like this one. Could I be allowed to go now? This is uh, not oftenly used. Uh, it is possible, but seldom used. Posi uh, pwede siyang gamitin. Pero, pambihira nating marinig. Now, this is uh, better. Can I go now? Oh, this is normally used. <clears throat> palagi natin, ito ang palagi nating naririnig. Can I go now? Now, here are the modal. Here is the modal that is express obligation. The modal must. It is the commonly used modal that expresses obligation. Example. Now, 
Must is usually used before the main verb like uh, may and can. Must should be used before the main verb. Like this one. You must pay your bills on time. We start the sentence with the, uh, the subject you, followed the modal must, and then followed with the main verb. Again, this main verb pay has no ed or ing because it is not a participle. It is not a present participle or past participle, perfect partici participle. No, it is not. It is a root word of the main verb pay. Okay, you must pay your bills on time. It is an idea expressing obligation. In Filipino, this is tra literally translated as dapat. Dapat kang magbayad ng iyong bills. Alright. You must pay your bills on time. You is our subject. And then must is our modal. And then pay is our main verb. If we are going to invert the sentence, <coughs> reverse the sentence like this. Must you pay your bills on time? The sentence begins with the modal must, and then the pronoun you, and then the main verb pay. Now, here it ends with a question mark. Now, it becomes a question. The idea is changed. From obligation, it becomes a question. Now, in using must, the authority for obligation comes from the one doing the talking. Yung nagsasalita, siya ang may authority. May authority <clears throat> dito sa uh, obligation. Example, you must follow the rules of court. Ang nagsasabi rito, ang may authority na magbigay ng obligasyon ay ang speaker. You must follow the rules of court. Now, take note of the structure of the sentence. It begins with the subject you, followed with the modal must, and then followed with the main verb, follow. Alright. This is, our subject here is second person. This can be either singular or plural. Now, if you are going to use the third person singular, it becomes like this. He must do his part. The, sad, the sentence begins with the pronoun he, and then the modal must, and then the main verb do. Another example, they must observe our guidelines. Here the sentence begins with the uh, third person, plural, they, followed with the modal must, and then the main verb observe. Now notice here, our main verb does not have ing or ed because it is not a participle, but rather it is the root word of the main verb observe. Pag sinabi natin root word, kung ano yung original spelling ng verb, ay yun na rin ang gagamitin. That is what it means with a root word. The spelling is not changed. Now, models expressing prohibition. Ito na, sa prohibition na. Not is a negative word that is added to a model to express prohibition. Yung mga models na nabanggit natin kangina, kapag yun ay dinagdaga ng not, nagiging negative na siya at nagiging prohibition. Example. <clears throat> the word can plus not becomes cannot. This is the... Uh, <clears throat> Combination of two words, can and not. It becomes cannot. Now, we have also the shortened form of the two words, cannot. It is can. This is the contracted form or the shortened form with an apostrophe here. But actually, it is the combination of the two words, cannot. But it has the same meaning. Example, you cannot go there. 
Now, this is an example of pro prohibition. You are prohibited to go there. If you are going to remove the word not, it becomes positive. You can go there. It is a permission. But if you are going to include not, it becomes prohibition instead of uh, permission. Now again, the sentence begins with the pronoun you followed with our modals. Two word modals, can and not. This is the negative form of can. And since we use cannot, it becomes prohibition. Again, it is only because of the insertion of the negative word, word not. If we remove not, if we remove this negative word not, it becomes permission. Okay. Must plus not equals must not. And the shortened word or the contracted word is mustn't. And this mustn't is also must not. They have the same form. This is two words, this is one word, but basically they have the same use and the same meaning in a sentence. Example, you must not be here. Alright, if you are going to shorten this one, it becomes like this. You mustn't be here. This is, alright, this is a, a prohibition because of the word not. You are not allowed to be here. That is the idea here. <clears throat> you are not allowed. Now, for your output in this lesson, you are going to take a quiz by answering the following items and then take a picture of your output using your cell phone and then send it to your subject teachers through messenger for checking and recording. In order for you to have your own grades, your teacher must have your own grades, so you should submit your output by taking picture of your papers and then send it through messenger to your subject teachers for checking and of course for recording also. Alright, just pause the video and then uh, answer your test and then let us proceed with the answers. Now here are the answers. Number one is may. May I say something? This is permission. Number two, can we participate in the discussion? Pwede rin dito ang may, kaya lang, mas appropriate dito ang can. Can we participate in the discussion? Number three, you must attend in the meeting tomorrow. This is obligation, kaya must ang gamit natin. Number four, number four, he must not repeat what he has done to avoid penalty. This is for prohibition. And number five, we mustn't tell them our secret. Let them guess it. This is prohibition. So our answer is mustn't or must not. That is uh, both correct. Alright. If you have learned something in this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, click the notification bell in order to be updated. And of course, please share also. Thank you very much for watching.